Welcome back to the Game Master's Domain. This is episode 49 of the Homebrewers Cookbook, The Timekeeper, based off of Zelda from both Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. If you want to support me in making this my full-time job, you can follow me on Patreon, where you can pick up this pack under the $1 tier, and if you want some extra stuff to go along with it, you can grab that version of the pack under the $5 tier. Also make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you actually see when all of our videos come out. Now with that said, let's see what the Timekeeper Sorcerer brings to the table. Now before anyone says anything, I know that with Zelda, it really seems like this should be a cleric domain, and not a sorcerer origin, and possibly even a wizard school of some sort given how much she studies, but I do have my reasons for why I went with sorcerer instead. First, let's take a look at why this isn't a cleric domain. Clerics gain their powers through their faith and devotion to their deity, and while Zelda is clearly devout, even getting herself sick in some cases while praying, it never grants her any sorts of powers. As for the possible wizard angle, yes, Zelda is very smart and she loves to study stuff, but again, that never really leads to any sort of magical development. She really just studies all the old Sheikah technology. Meanwhile, during the Calamity, what actually unlocked Zelda's power wasn't faith to a god or study of some ancient tech, but instead it was a powerful emotional reaction to someone she cares about getting hurt. Not only that, with Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild, it's a lot more clear that these powers are passed down through Zelda's bloodline, since her mother had these powers when she was alive, and now Zelda has them. And if that isn't a sorcerer, I don't know what is. Oh, and there are possible Tears of the Kingdom spoilers, I don't know what footage I'm going to be using just yet in the background, so I just want to cover that before we go any further. Okay, is everyone still here? Perfect. That means we can look at the spells you get for being born with the blood of the goddess. I'm really happy that the Tasha's book actually decided to give sorcerers origin spells, so now they can have just a bit more freedom with what they're picking. I tried to keep most of these spells time or light themed, given, well, that this is another time-based subclass, but not quite in the same way as the time killer, where you kept stopping time, but more in this one you're controlling time, fast forwarding or reversing it as you need. So first up, we have something to help speed up your reaction time. The first level spell, Gift of Alacrity, which lets you add 1d8 to your initiative rolls. And to give your team the classic giant glowing weak point that Zelda bosses have, you also get Guiding Bolt, which on top of giving your team advantage on their next attack against that creature, it also does a good amount of radiant damage. Also, I have no idea if you guys can hear it, there is a bird having a fit outside my window, and I cannot get him to stop, so if you can hear him, say hi. For second level spells, both of them are kind of time related. The first one, which lets you get a small glimpse into the future, is Augury. Or your second spell, Mirror Image, lets you grab some past and future versions of yourselves to mess with your enemies. But if things have already gone bad for the party, you get the third level spells, Aura of Vitality, and... I always have a hard time pronouncing this one, Revivify? So you can, you know, bring someone back from the dead if need be. And one of my favorite spells for this list is the level 4 spell, Banishment. I really couldn't not give a Zelda-inspired sorcerer banishment with her ability to seal Ganon away for 100 years, and Resilient Sphere for, I guess like her diamond spinning attack in Smash? That works, right? And once you hit level 9, you do get your last spells for this origin set, those being Greater Restoration to remove curses or other nasty effects like that, and Temporal Shunt to just move someone else through time when they try to attack you. Shows them. This spell just reminds me of the Dio and Polnareff stare scene, and I think that says enough. But unlike Dio, you can do more than just stopping time. You can also fast forward it or reverse it at will with your first ability ebb and flow. This lets you speed up or slow down time within a 15 foot radius around you, and it comes in two parts. 
First, as a bonus action, you can target a friendly creature and give them an extra action on their turn, like if you'd cast haste on them. So it can only be used to make a single weapon attack, cast a spell, or stuff like that. Or if an enemy happens to move within 15 feet of you, you can use your reaction and force them to make a wisdom saving throw. If they fail that saving throw, their movement speed is reduced by half until the end of their next turn, leaving them wide open for your teammates to pincushion them. For the time being, this is a once per rest ability, so just be mindful of where you use it. It's really up to you when you use these, obviously, but it might be a bit of a waste to use the slowdown feature on a grunt running past you when you could use it to slow down the boss who's trying to run away. So, uh, remember how, like, less than 30 seconds ago, I said you could only use ebb and flow once per rest? Well, not anymore. Since the secondary effect of your level 6 feature, Time Walker, lets you use it a number of times based on your charisma modifier. So now you can slow down your enemies a lot more, while still making your fighter a blur of attacks. Oh, and if you wanted to double up on turning your fighter into a blender, the main effect of Time Walker lets you cast either haste or slow once per day for free. There's actually a really mean combo you can do with haste if you have another caster in the team that happens to have enchantment spells. If the enemy happens to fail like a dominate person spell, they're going to be a willing target for your haste. And if they ever happen to break free of Dominate Person, then you can just drop your concentration on haste, immediately making them lose their next turn. So not only did you bring them to your side for a little bit, you also immediately stop them from taking their next turn once they break free, and by then they should be close to going down. But if things aren't going so well for your fight, maybe the plan didn't work out, or something just went horribly wrong, you might need to take one of the new spells you can grab between level 6 and 14 that should hopefully turn the fight around. And that is the new 7th level necromancy spell, Temporal Rescue. This time reversal spell takes one action to cast and requires 100 gold, which is consumed, a lot like most revival spells with their diamonds, but I just did the gold here. Since honestly, a diamond worth 300 gold and just burning 300 gold are pretty much the same thing, it just saves you a few minutes of your party demanding they go to every single jewelry store until they find a diamond of the right value. Unlike other spells of this nature, Temporal Rescue doesn't need the target to be dead, just at 0 HP. And when you cast it, they're kind of pulled back through time, healing them for half of their total hit points, and curing them of any conditions, including curses, poisons, being petrified, or even being prone. But if maybe you don't want your party members to have to travel back through all of their most recent injuries, your level 14 feature should help to keep them out of trouble. Glimpse of the Future is another of those features that affects time within that same 15 foot radius as Ebb and Flow. This time it lets you use your reaction to add your charisma modifier to the saving throws of a creature within range. And also, you do count, since you are always within 15 feet of yourself. At least you should be, as long as you haven't been messing with time too much. A plus 4 or 5 to a saving throw could really make the difference. Especially if your friend's weak stats are being targeted by a smarter enemy, that knows that your fighter isn't the most nimble, or that your rogue isn't the most sturdy guy. You also get to speed up your own time a little bit with this for free, letting you add your charisma modifier to your initiative rolls, so you should be going first most of the time, especially if you combine this with the D8 from Gift of Alacrity. So you should be able to get your buffs out before anyone else gets a turn. But you know, not everything goes to plan, and sometimes it's good to have a panic button. Something you can hit when stuff hits the fan, and you need to make sure that at least one character survives so there's no TPK. And aside from also making it so that you don't age, that's what your level 18 feature, the Sage of Time, kind of does for you. It's a panic button, but it also doesn't have to be, and you'll see why in a minute. What this actually does is pretty simple. You use your action to rewind yourself, teleporting to some place you've been within the last 24 hours, healing up to half your HP maximum, and regaining some spell slots. But like I said, this doesn't have to be a panic button. It could be used as a mid-fight heal and refresh on your spell slots or be used to go back in time to when you had enough spell slots to revive a fallen ally, or get to a different position that's more advantageous for the fight. 
Or again, use to bail on a fight if you don't have any other choice. Just hope it never gets to that point. You only get so many redos after all. Normally, I would end it here. I went over spells, features, and stuff like that. But for once, I also made a few metamagic options, and I wanted to go over two of those here. But the last one you'll have to wait and find it on Patreon. So let's hop in. First, I made Delayed Spell. Have you ever looked at Delayed Blast Fireball and wanted to do that with other spells? I really have. After all, why should Fireball get all the love? It's not like it's already a giant AoE spell at 3rd level that does as much damage as the 5th level spell Circle of Death, and has even been stated by the creators to be overpowered. And while they did give it pretty bad scaling for upcasting, it still gets the delayed version which makes it much stronger. So that's what delayed spell does. You spend 2 sorcery points when you cast a spell, and you cause that spell to be delayed for a few rounds equal to your charisma modifier. And for every turn that it builds up, it gets 1d8 extra damage die of its damage type. And in case you decide to change your mind, you can rewind the spell as long as you do it before the spell goes off. You regain the spell slot that you would have you know, used to cast the spell, but you don't get the points back. There's also the much less glamorous freezing spell, letting you spend 3 sorcery points to restrain a creature as long as they already failed the saving throw on the spell letting you lock them down with some stasis chains so your party can dogpile them. Overall, I think this subclass kind of leans more towards the tactical, field control sort of build, which fits perfectly well for Zelda since she's not really about all the big damage numbers. Just remember that time travel has consequences, and you should be fine. This was a little bit of a rushed build, and honestly a rushed script as well, since I kind of forgot to write the script all day on my writing day until 11pm, and I spent the last two hours just scribbling this all down. I could have really used some of the features from this subclass actually to get this done in a more timely manner. But that's where I'll end it for now. If you like this sort of stuff, you can check out my other videos for custom monsters, subclasses, and races, or check out the Discord server to join our community. That will do it for our session today though, I'll see you next time, and have a wonderful day.